like to bring this meeting to order the April 25th, 2022 Village of Villa Park Village Board of Trustees. Clerk Konecki, please call the roll. Trustee Salella. Here. Trustee Corkery. Here. Trustee Kosar. Here. Trustee Kumar. Trustee Murphy. Here. Trustee Patrick. Here. President Cazone. Here. And please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and then please remain standing. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us together this evening. May we have meaningful discussions that will help us to assist our village in these trying times. Help us to make the decisions that will affect the staff, directors, and residents of Villa Park. Guide us through the challenges we face and may we approach each other with respect and kindness as one group. In your name, amen. Okay, we have a couple presentations this evening. Uh, first one, kind of unfortunate, we're losing one of our uh, lieutenants on the fire department, but uh, he's, I'm sure, gonna go to a, a better life. Uh, a little, little less, <laughs> a little less stress, I would think. Uh, retiring uh, Fire Department Lieutenant Chris Gilland, 26 years of dedicated service. Thank you. <laughs> and our Chief Rakaznik will say a few words. I don't think it's working. All right, thank you, Village Board and uh, President Cazone. Uh, this evening we are recognizing Cr uh, Lieutenant Chris Gillen, uh, 26 plus years of dedicated service to the Villa Park Fire Department and the residents of Villa Park. Chris will be retiring on May 4th, next, uh, about a week and a half away. Um, Chris started his fire service career in Oprah Terrace in 1993, and then uh, he took the, uh, the test here in Villa Park in 1996, and was hired in 1996 as a full-time firefighter paramedic. <clears throat> in August of 2010, Chris was promoted to fire lieutenant and has served in that capacity for 12 years or so, right, Chris? Chris has been involved with many different divisions of the fire department. I believe, I believe you spent about 15 years in uh, public education, and he's currently our EMS coordinator, which takes a lot of work um, to keep all of our paramedics trained, um, all their certifications up, so on and so forth. So, Chris, thank you for doing all of that work. We appreciate it. On May 4th, uh, we will be having a retirement party at the fire station, uh, Station 81 down by Willowbrook High School, from uh, 1 to 3 p.m. Uh, we'll have uh, some cake, coffee, uh, plaque, and uh, more formal than tonight. Um, and we'll have some speeches going on, and Chris will be there with his family, and it'll be a, a nice event. Chris is here this evening with his wife, Stephanie. Uh, she's right there sitting down. Thank you for being here. Thank guys for being here as well. Chris, I wish you the very best in your next chapter. Stay healthy, good health. Congratulations. <laughs> President Cazone, he like Chris would like to make a couple comments. Sure. Okay. I don't think it's on.
Okay, our next presentation is the 2021 Green Champion Awards. And I believe Bob Wagner is going to present it. Thank you, President Kazone uh, and Village Board. Um, as stated, I'm here to present our, this is actually our 2021 Green Champion Awards. And this is the fourth year that the commission is uh, making this presentation. And I just want to give a little brief description about how we, how the commission chose the, uh, the recipients. Uh, we advertise through the Villa Park Review, um, through social media, multiple posts, and then we, uh, we had uh, flyers and applications around town. So this year, uh, we, were, we are fortunate to have two recipients. Uh, the first one is State Representative Deb Conroy. Uh, Deb Conroy is not able to be with us this evening. She's out of state. But I'll just read you briefly the, the, re the reason for her nomination uh, that the, our re the resident gave. Um, Representative Conroy has a 100% positive rating from the Illinois Environmental Council, which is a nonpartisan environmental group. Uh, for her 2021 legislative record on environmental issues. Um, and uh, one example was her uh, co-sponsorship of House Bill 1792, uh, which made uh, more money available for conservation around the state and other, um, other uh, legislation that she's co-sponsored. Uh, she cannot be with us here this evening, but she will be with us at our May meeting. Uh, our other recipient, who we're fortunate to have with us this evening, is David Bravos. And I'll just read from, his, uh, from the nomination that we received. David is tireless in his research of local natural history and advocacy for green living. He is a community cooking organizer for Sustained DuPage, hosting cooking nights with produce from the Sustained DuPage Garden where he finds and develops recipes, then directs members in a shared evening of cooking and dining together. He shares knowledge and information on such things as fermenting, canning, baking, all with, joy, with a joyful, inclusive spirit. Um, he and his partner, Anton, have cultivated a beautiful native plant garden in their backyard that serves as a demonstration project uh, for sustained to page. So we're very pleased uh, that David could be here with his partner, Anton. So I'd like to ask David to come to the, the podium. <laughs> I'll just read from the plaque here. Uh, the Villa Park Environmental Concerns Commission hereby awards David Bravos as its 2021 Green Champion for his efforts in promoting the conservation of natural resources and sustainable living. Congratulations. Thank you very much. There are some folks here from Sustained DuPage as well. <laughs> and uh, we just want to, you know, we, we, we present the award because we want to recognize people who do exceptional things, but we want other residents to be encouraged and to be inspired to do more things for the environment. So we appreciate the time. Thank Great. you. Thanks, Bob. Thank you. Congratulations. Okay, we'll move on to item number four, public comments on agenda items. Clerk Panecki, do we have anyone signed up? I have nobody. Okay, do we have moment. anyone? I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Cheryl Tucker, 9C is what I'm speaking about. Um, I'm coming in front of this board tonight requesting you approve the resolution with uh, Williams Architect with the same respect and authorization you have given as a board to Chuck Dye's Phase 3 Construction Engineering, RJN Group for Sanitation Sur uh, Source Services, Chris Burke for the Phase 2 Design Engineering, so many other companies that have come before this board for resolution approval. 
Not only has William Architect come highly recommended to the village and the Park and Rec Department for other, from other agencies in the area, they have worked with the village of Villa Park for several years. The research done on Williams Architects speaks for itself and that they have proven that they have the ability to do the job. Again, I ask for you to pr approve the resolution with Williams Architects so that the building of the Recreation Center can move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, do we have any other public comments? This is on agenda items. Okay, seeing none. Item five, amendments to the agenda. Do we have any amendments? Okay, seeing none. Mr. President. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I would like to make an amendment. I'd like to add to, for discussion only, some talk about Committee of the Whole, which was a memo that went out a week or so ago that we haven't talked about. Um, and I'd also like for discussion only to add on to the agenda um, some discussion about the interview process that's going to be going on for the next two days so we can all get clarification and discuss it. Okay. Um, well, that's a motion. Okay. So that's your motion? Okay. Yeah, that would be a motion. Okay. Do we have a second for that? Trustee Corkery? A second? Okay. Any comments or discussion? Okay, seeing none. Clerk Konecki, we have a roll uh, for amendments to the agenda. All right, Trustee uh, Kumar. Oh, she's not here. Trustee Salello? Yes. Uh, Trustee Murphy? No. Uh, Trustee Corkery? Yes. Trustee uh, Patrick? Yes. Trustee Kozar? Yes. President Kazone? Yes. Okay. Okay, so we will add that. Can we do that? Uh, you, you can put that um, af before public comments on, on agenda. agenda okay. Items. Okay. So we'll move that to uh, after item 9D. Okay. Any other amendments to the agenda? Okay. We move on to proclamations. Item number 6A: Arbor Day Proclamation for April 29th, 2022. Whereas in 1872, J. Sterling Morton proposed that a special day be set aside for planting trees to be known as Arbor Day. And whereas Arbor Day is now observed around the world and is celebrated on the last Friday in April in the state of Illinois. And whereas trees can be a solution to combating climate change by reducing the erosion of our precious topsoil by wind and water, cutting heating and cooling costs, moderating the temperature, cleaning the air, producing life-giving oxygen, and providing habitat for wildfire, wildlife. And whereas trees are a renewable resource giving us paper, wood for our homes, fuel for our fires, and countless other wood products. And whereas trees in our village increase property values, enhance the economic vitality of business areas, and beautify our community. And whereas for the 36th year in a row, Villa Park has been designated as a Tree City USA. And whereas Villa Park will celebrate Arbor Day with a tree planting ceremony on April 29th, 2022. Now therefore, I, Nick Cazone, Village President of the Village of Villa Park, do hereby proclaim April 29th, 2022 as Arbor Day in the Village of Villa Park. Further, I urge all citizens to plant trees to gladden the heart and promote the well-being of this and future generations. And uh, I'll just add too that there, there will be a tree planting ceremony um, on Friday at uh, 10 o'clock uh, on Central and Addison. It'll be on the Prairie Path. Uh, so 10 o'clock, we'll be planting a tree there. Uh, if anyone wants to come out, uh, be happy to have everybody there. Okay, we'll move to item 6B, Public Service Recognition Week Proclamation. Whereas Americans are served every single day by public servants at the federal, state, and local levels, these unsung heroes do the work that keeps our, nas our nation working. <clears throat> and whereas during the COVID-19 pandemic, many public servants made sacrifices and stepped up to the challenge necessary to be on the front lines and to ensure our safety, convenience, and well-being. And whereas many public servants, including military personnel, police officers, firefighters, 
Border Patrol officers, embassy employees, healthcare professionals, and others risk their lives each day in service to the people of the village of Villa Park, the state of Illinois, and around the world. And whereas public employees serve in areas such as education, the arts, the environment, public infrastructure, parks, community planning, finance, human rights, recreation, information technology, human resources, communications, and more. And whereas the public employees of the Village of Villa Park are committed to exhibiting the highest standards of professional excellence, creativity, skill, and customer service. And whereas without these, these public servants at every level, continuity would be impossible in a democracy that regularly changes its leaders and elected officials. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Nick Cazone, President of the Village of Villa Park, along with the Village of Villa Park Board of Trustees, do hereby proclaim the week of May 1 to May 7, 2022, as Public Service Recognition Week in the Village of Villa Park, and encourage all citizens to recognize and express their appreciation for the important contributions of public employees throughout the village and around the world. And I'd just like to give our th my thanks to uh, all of our public employees. Um, we, without them, uh, we'd be in a lot of trouble, they, especially during COVID. Uh, our Bill Park employees really stepped up and uh, kept the village going and came, we came out of this in real good shape. So uh, congratulations. <laughs> Okay, we'll move on to item seven, the consent agenda. Item seven A, the minutes from the April 7th, 2022 Village Board Meeting. And item seven B, bill listings for the weeks of April, 7, April 11th, 2022 and April 18th, 2022 in the total amount of $619,031.41. Do we have a motion? Trustee Salella. We have a second, Trustee Patrick. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, Clerk Konecki. Okay, Trustee Corkery? Yes. Uh, Trustee Kozar? <coughs> yes. Trustee Murphy? <coughs> yes. Trustee Patrick? Yes. Trustee Salella? Yes. President Kazon? Yes. Okay, move on to item 8A, is second reading of an ordinance of the Village of Villa Park, DuPage County, Illinois, granting a special use for a drive-through in the MX3 district with variations at 24 East St. Charles Avenue. Andrew Guerrero. Thank you, Your Honor. Property owner <clears throat> Dr. Muhammad Sarandinen proposes to demolish the existing building and, and build a 1,800-square-foot quick-serve restaurant with a drive through The size and configuration of the site limit ability to accommodate the zoning code and requirements to place the drive through structure in the rear yard. The proposal meets the goals in the comprehensive plan and, sta and standards for special use and variation and provides for public benefits. The aging building would be demolished and a new building would be would meet the standards of a new MX-3 zoning district, improve sight lines for the drivers exiting the Walgreens to the east, create a screened landscape buffer between the residents to the north, and improve stormwater with the inclusion of a 30-foot landscape area to the rear of the property. Placing the drive-through in the rear of the pro rear yard provides the drive-through egress onto Charles Road, not onto Cornell. Removes a curb cut on Cornell Avenue and provides significant landscaping. Overall, significant landscaping will be added to the lot to add a variant, but a variance is needed for the width of the perimeter parking and the landscape beds. Thank you. Okay, do we have a motion for this? Trustee Corkery. We have a second. <coughs> Trustee Patrick. Okay, any questions or comments? Trustee Murphy. Yes, I just have a comment, a follow-up <clears throat> from our last meeting with additional resident input. I still have not one resident that's in favor of the drive-through. Uh, they are, however, uh, in favor of the restaurant at that facility, but have expressed extreme concerns about the safety of a drive-through. And again, that's primarily based upon the exit of the drive-through through the Walgreens, as well as some sightings of some major semis from Walgreens making deliveries uh, around that back east side of the Walgreens and how that would impact a drive-through coming out at the neighboring property. So as a result of that, um, I would continue to not be in favor of this based on the way it's written with the drive-through in there. 
Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Um, I know that this, this was kind of a difficult decision for the Planning and Zoning Commission uh, with the drive-through. Um, they, but they spent a lot of time discussing this, and I think they uh, they feel that it should be in uh, in the best interest of this this restaurant to uh, to have a drive-through there. But, uh, okay. Okay. Any other comments, questions? Korkanecki. Hey, Trustee Silella. Yes. Trustee Murphy. No. Trustee Kosar. Yes. Trustee Patrick. Yes. Trustee Corkery. Yes. President Cazone. Yes. Okay. So that will pass. Okay, item 8B, an ordinance of the Village of Villa Park, DuPage County, Illinois, amending the Planned Unit Development Ordinance 3727, which amended Ordinance Number 2501, for variation from Section 6.10.3, uses to permit an additional accessory structure for outdoor storage of materials at 880 North Addison Road. Andrew Greer. Yes, sir. Bone Roofing at 880 North Edison Road has requested an amendment to the Plan Unit Development Ordinance 3727 in order to construct a second material storage structure immediately south of the existing structure. The amendment of the PUD allows for additional outside accessory structure to shell shelter building materials. <clears throat> the zoning code requires landscaping to be installed along the south border of the new structure, which is adjacent to the railroad north of North Avenue. Condition of approval includes installation of landscaping along the entrance of Addison Road, which will provide a greater aesthetic improvement for the community and landscaping will be planted there. Planning and Zoning Commission has recommended approval of this request. Okay, thank you. We have a motion. Trustee Patrick. Mr. President, I'd like to make that motion. Okay, do we have a second? I'll Trustee second. Corkery. Okay, any questions or comments? Okay, seeing none, Clerk Kornecki, please. Trustee Kozar. Yes. Trustee Silella? Yes. Trustee Murphy? Yes. Trustee Corkery? <coughs> yes. Trustee Patrick? Yes. President Kazam? Yes. Move on to item 9A, resolutions. The resolution of the Village of Villa Park, DuPage County, Illinois, approving an engineering services agreement with Trans Systems Corporation of Schaumburg, Illinois, for phase one and phase two design engineering of the Rebuild Illinois, <clears throat> excuse me, Rebuild Illinois resurfacing project in an amount not to exceed $163,644. Andrew Greer. Thank you, Your Honor. The Rebuild Illinois Resurfacing Project is proposed in the Village of Villa Park's 2022 budget to begin utilizing the funding the Village received with the Rebuild Illinois funding designated through the motor fuel tax or otherwise known as MFT distribution. The project's objective is to improve the condition of selected roadways that are in need of resurfacing. The project will occur over a two-year period with engineering design and construction of the first group of streets budgeted for calendar year 2022 and the staff would like to proceed with that design effort. Staff recommends approval of the engineering services agreement with Trans System Corporation of Schaumburg, Illinois for the phase one and phase two design engineering of the Rebuild Illinois <coughs> Surfacing Project, an amount not to exceed $163,644. Funding for this agreement will be from the Street Improvement Fund 60-502-10-292. And if you're honor, I can list the streets that are included for everyone's benefit. Yeah, would you please? Thank you. Uh, for this year, in the 2022 streets, the, the streets that will be planned will be Wisconsin Street from St. Charles to Division, Elm from Westmore to Addison, and Division from Westmore to Addison. Uh, in 2023, the streets would be Central from Addison to Cornell, Cornell from Central to Kenilworth, Congress uh, from Ardmore to Summit, Harvard from St. Charles to Central, and if we have any funds still available, we would look at Cornell from Park to Madison. Okay. Thank you. Okay, do we have a motion? Trustee Salella, we have a second. Trustee Patrick? Okay, any questions or comments? Okay, seeing none, Clerk Renecki, please. Okay, Trustee Corkery? <coughs> yes. Uh, Trustee Murphy? Yes. Trustee Patrick? Yes. Trustee Kozar? Yes. Trustee Salella? Yes. President Cazal? Yes. On item 9B, a resolution of the Village of Villa Park, DuPage County, Illinois, approving license agreement for the portion of an alley right-of-way between the Village of Villa Park and the owners of the property at 815 South Michigan Avenue. Major Grover. Thank you, Your Honor. 
The property owners at 815 South Michigan Avenue wish to remove and replace an existing chain link fence located in the alley right away adjacent to their property with a new privacy fence. A license agreement would be needed to grant the property owner's permission for the proposed construction and maintenance of the new fence. Thank you. Great. Do we have a motion for the resolution? Trustee I'll Corkery? Do we have a second? Yes. Trustee Sowell. Any questions or comments? Okay. Seeing none, Clerk Renecki. Trustee Murphy? Yes. Trustee Kozar? Yes. Trustee Patrick? Yes. Trustee Corkery? Yes. Trustee Silella? Yes. President Kozal? Yes. Okay, move on to item 9C, resolution to approve and authorize the execution of a standard form of agreement between owner and architect by and between the Village of Villa Park and Williams Architects for the Lions Park Recreation Center. Andrew Grove. Thank you, Your Honor. On March 14th, 2022, the Village Board approved the letter of proposed agreement prepared by Williams Architects of Itasca, Illinois, to provide certain professional architectural and engineering services in the amount not to exceed $1 $378,080 in connection with the design development, construction, documents and permitting, bidding and negotiations, and construction administration of the Lions Park Recreation Center project. The letter of proposed agreement com <clears throat> contemplates the preparation and approval of formalized AIA standard form of agreement. The proposed resolution authorizes the formalized AIA standard form of agreement with Williams Architects and it's complicated to provide certain professional architectural and engineering services in connection with the Lions Park Recreation Center project. Thank you. Hey, do we have a motion? Mr. Trustee President, Patrick. I'd like to make that motion. Thank you. Trustee Salala, second. Okay, questions or comments? Trustee Kozar. Approving this specifically tonight, how does that affect our grant? The, the grant application is in. However, we, we need to have the funding, I believe, finalized uh, with construction by 20, 2024. Uh, so therefore, we, this would be helped to keep uh, the project on task to go out for bidding by this late, late fall, early winter. So that construction can begin in the spring of 2023. So specifically, if we were, we've got a motion on the table to approve this contract as it sits. Is there a dis, are, are we adversely affecting our grant application if we were to postpone this to the next meeting, the, the voting of this contract? The application is in, I mean, in terms of the grant, it, it, what it does is uh, we've already approved the letter, the proposed intent of the agreement, um, but it would just further delay kind of finalizing the beginning of uh, design standards. Um, because I just have, we received this on Friday, it's 39 pages plus um, attachments. Uh, I mean, I think it's a lot to go through on top of having our interviews tomorrow as well. Um, we have a missing uh, board member on this that I haven't spoken with, um, with regard to this contract. Um, and ultimately what we're approving is one point, basically $1.5 million worth of services. So I would like to make a motion that we simply table this till the next meeting. So we all have the opportunity to talk amongst ourselves if we feel the need to, and just pay better attention to this contract so that we're hopefully getting into a $1.5 million contract at least as advised as we possibly can to have some time to ask questions or make modifications or that. So my, my motion would be that we table this till the next meeting. Just for clarification, that's a motion to postpone to the next meeting. Yes, a motion to postpone. Thank yes. you. Okay. okay, we have a second? I have a second. Trustee that. Patrick, any questions or comments on the mm -hmm. motion to delay this until the next meeting? Clerk Renecke. Okay, Trustee Stilella? Yes. Uh, Trustee Murphy? No. Uh, Trustee Corkery? Yes. Trustee Patrick? Yes. Uh, Trustee Kosar? Yes. President Cazone? No. Okay. Uh, that passes also. We will uh, table this or uh, delay this until our next meeting, which would be uh, May 9th. Okay, move on to item 9D, Resolution of the Village of Villa Park, DuPage County, Illinois, approving the fiscal year 2022 safety incentive program and safe driver program. 
Major Kerr. Sorry. Thank you, Your Honor. The Village Safety Committee is recommending the continuation of the safety incentive and dri safe driver programs for 2022. The program has been in place since 1993 and annually establishes safety goals for each department. For 2022, the overall goal is to have no more than 500, 500 days of lost time by all village employees. The department targets are based on a five-year average of time lost and the 25% reduction from that average. For meeting the targets, employees will receive a, <clears throat> a half a day. So, oh, okay. Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> we'll receive a full day or a $50 reward. Employees who operate a village owned or village approved vehicle who do not have a, any chargeable driving accidents in 2022 calendar year will receive a safe driver award. Just for the record, for 2021, all departments met the established targets with a total of four chargeable accidents, resulting in 24 lost days. The Safety Committee is, recommends approval of the 2022 Safety Incentive and Safe Driver Program. Thank you. Okay, do we have a motion? Trustee Patrick. Mr. President, I'd like to make that motion. Okay, do we have a second? Trustee Kozart. Okay, any questions or comments? Okay, seeing none, Clerk Renecki. Okay, Trustee Murphy. Yes. Trustee uh, uh, Salella. Yes. Trustee Patrick. Yes. Trustee Corkery. Yes. Trustee Kozar. Yes. President Casal. Yes. Okay, uh, with that, we will move to the amendment to the agenda the um, discussion only of the committee of the whole um trustee kozar since you made the motion we'll let you start so i just wanted to have an opportunity for the board to discuss the pros and the cons of uh having a committee of the whole uh, uh director guerrera had written a memo uh dated march 31st and i appreciate that um, that kind of describes what we've done in the past here in the village and uh, what a committee of the whole is. And essentially, um, and please feel free to speak on it, but it's essentially, it's a, it's a meeting before the meeting. That is a little bit less formal. It's not exactly like coffee with the board, um, but it's less formal where we can discuss items and have you know, conversation. For example, uh, going through... Um, tonight's on tonight's agenda about the architectural contract uh, would be something that we could take on in, co in uh, committee of the whole um, i believe that it would be beneficial to us to uh, have that perhaps once a month um, to be able to bring up any new ideas that anybody would like to see come our way on the board um, and have an opportunity to talk about you know different projects and that that we've got going or just whatever any trustee has a concern of that they, they think that the board should collaborate on. Um, I don't think our board, I don't think our board talks enough. Um, you know, we're limited to individual phone conversations. So it's, it's kind of like a bunch of telephone tag, you know, one trustee calls another, then that trustee calls another, uh, committee of the whole is, you know, as I envision it, a less rushed opportunity to, uh, you know, kind of go over what, what we want to see done and and what we have questions about um and uh mr guerrera if uh you want to add anything as to you know the structure of committee of the whole you know for the edification of anybody uh yes thank you uh the, the memo you're referencing i, I kind of went through and, and researched some of the committee of the whole uh, along with several other kind of neighboring communities and, and maybe greater chicago land areas that, that host or have community of the whole as you stated, there's a wide variety of ways to achieve that, um, with some having them 30 minutes before board meetings, some having them on alternate nights. Um, and the majority of them, a lot of times, are for certain topics that are on the upcoming agendas, whether it be that, follow that, that night's agenda or maybe the next meeting agenda, to have a little bit more uh, discussions or questions answered um, on, those, on those topics. Um, there's several... Uh, things that would need to be decided on the board if that's the direction you so so you wish to, to proceed obviously uh timing the number of of, of meetings uh, i believe you recommended one a month uh, some timing the dates um and, and kind of i believe some of the additional items in terms of setting the agenda the items that can be on the agenda 
Uh, you are correct. It's more of an informal, as it's all discussion-based items. Uh, there would be no action taken in the committee as a whole, as that would be required to come before the full board uh, during village boards, uh, regular village board meetings. Um, and it, and it, but it's obviously a board's decision. It's a, a policy decision, so that would be best served uh, by discussion and, and by the board. And I can maybe turn it over to uh, Ms. Wolf as well for some maybe legal clarifications. Yes, um, just to add a, a comment to Manager Guerra's proposal um, and the information that he provided you, um, just to reaffirm, this is ultimately a board decision as to whether or not you want to implement the committee of the whole process in your meeting protocol. Um, however, because it is a policy decision, I just want the board to think about the fact that you're getting a new manager coming in, you're, you're going through the process to um, hire a permanent manager now and maybe that would be the appropriate time to consider the um, change in the meeting protocol um, with the involvement of that manager as well so the manager can establish the appropriate scheduling um, with respect to you know how the meeting will take place and make recommendations in, in that regard as well trustee patrick uh, thank you I, I i agree with uh, trustee kozar i think um, it would be very uh, extremely beneficial for us as a board to communicate more to have an opportunity to talk about things upcoming agenda items as well i completely understand where you're coming from as well and would not um, disagree with that um, however uh, i do think that we at least need to hold committee of the whole at least once a month trustee murphy yes um i am opposed to implementing committee of the whole i feel like there are several areas that we can improve upon before we were to decide to implement that if um, we ensure that all the packets and all of the amendments to the agendas and everything on it are all read and understood and any questions associated with any of these attachments get directed to the appropriate resources before the meeting uh, i i don't think that uh, we should have a need to implement another meeting we also have coffee with the board as an opportunity, and we um, have had limited attendance at coffee with the board. We have commissions that are addressing every, I believe, every issue and every area for the items on these agendas, and the commissions and the commissioners have made themselves accessible if we have any questions associated with anything on the agenda. So I personally don't see any reason right now until we, if we get to the point where we're confident that all of the information has been digested and people are not making themselves accessible and after that we still want to continue to pursue information i would be more than happy to invest the additional time until that time i am not in favor of this additional meeting okay thank you thank you just goes there um since committee of the whole is a little more informal than what a our typical board meeting is uh, if a trustee had a, a scheduling conflict or didn't care to come they wouldn't be required to correct um, this is proposed to our attorney i mean it would be an optional addition to our meeting the committee of the whole well it depends on the rules that are established by the this board here so ultimately if you do implement a committee of the whole into one of the meetings um you'll make that via a village code change so you'll do that via the passage of an ordinance will, which will establish your rules associated with attendance at the committee meetings um, including the committee of the whole um, you are correct though that if someone um, if there isn't a quorum like you have to have at a board meeting discussion can still take place because the only thing that can happen at a committee of the whole meeting is discussion so it doesn't require the same number of uh, trustees attendance in order for the meeting to continue to go forward however you know to make it a fruitful committee of the whole meeting you'll want right. the commitment yeah, of the better. board mm -hmm. and you actually i should have articulated my question better but you answered it right at the end we um even without a quorum we can still have discussion because it's discussion only the quorum is basically if we're going to take a vote on something, which we wouldn't do in committee of the whole. That's correct. Right. 
So if uh, Trustee Murphy didn't want to attend Committee of the Whole, she wouldn't be obligated to. And we could still have our discussion here and not worry about breaking the Open Meetings Act of having you know two or more trustees in discussion. So yet another reason why I think that it's, in, it's important and it's very doable. Okay. Um, I'm okay with it. Um, I, I just I would like if we are going to do that I'd rather have it on a meeting night. I don't think we need an extra night to do this. Um, I agree with um, Attorney Wolf though. I think you know we should make our final decision once we get our our final manager in here or our permanent manager. What I'd like to see is um, just get ideas from the trustees on what they would like to see. You know, before a meeting, once a month, um, what they'd like to discuss on it. I'd like to get, you know, send me emails on that, and then maybe in the next meeting or, you know, I coffee with the board or something, we can discuss it and then uh, try to finalize our plans. And then once we get our new manager in, then bring that up and then bring it to the board for a, a vote. So, you know, if you guys all want to just email me and I'll, I'll get everybody's ideas together and send it out to everybody, and we can go from there. Trustee Kozar. Um, so this question kind of ties in with our, our next uh, agenda item that we just added, but um, what would perhaps, uh, Mr. President, what would you think that the time frame roughly is of the new manager? You know, I'm not I, committing you to a date, yeah. but I just- I would, like to part, see, right? I would like to see the new manager here by the end of May. Um, if we can get through, you know, we'll have, we're, Everyone knows we're having our interviews tomorrow and Wednesday. Um, we could finalize the last couple, bring them in, hopefully within a couple of weeks, and then, you know, possibly by the end of May. Um, I, I would like definitely not go too far into June if it goes that far, though. Um, our village attorney, do you think that's a reasonable time frame? Um, sure, it depends on this board and mm -hmm. the interview process, but um, I believe that uh, that is something that could be doable, yes. Okay. Well, that said, I mean, if we, if we are generally on target for it without committing anybody to anything, because we want to we pick a good candidate, so whatever that takes, um, you know, I, I think that would be reasonable to do it towards the end of May. Mm -hmm. Start start with that as a committee of the whole first time in uh, yeah, June or something. First, yeah, first, first or second meeting. In something June, yeah. to that at that mm -hmm. degree. Yep. All right. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments? Okay. Um, Mr. Kozar, you had requested about the interview process. Um, yeah. So the next two days, uh, we have a series of interviews with a number of candidates, and I have gotten a lot of. Uh, calls and questions and emails about you know how this is working and what's going on so um, that's why I suggested that we amend our agenda and maybe have some discussion about it so that you know people who are here and people who are watching from home just have an idea what we're what we're trying to achieve in the next couple days um, so my understanding is that there's going to be uh, basically three sets of interviews and if I'm wrong at any time just correct me but um, we're having three sets of interviews during the daytime for the next two days. It's going to be staff that is going to be essentially interviewing um, some of the all of the candidates that we had previously in our uh, executive session, kind of reduce the list down to. Um, so they're going to be interviewing during the daytime and in the evening. We're alternating between the uh, the citizens panel uh, that we've all nominated somebody. All the trustees have nominated one individual to represent, maybe not them, but Villa Park um, on the citizen panel. And then we're going to alternate back and forth. There'll be another online Zoom chat room um, where the trustees will then be interviewing the candidates. You know what? I'm going to have our uh, assistant manager, uh, Suzanne McVeigh, she can explain everything. Yeah, so that is correct. Um, there's the three panels. The department had start at 8.30 to 12.30 tomorrow and Wednesday. Um, the village board has two special board meetings tomorrow um, from 4.30 until about 9, 10 o'clock. Um, and then the community panel is at the same time. So you'll adjourn your meeting, um, and then we will go into executive session 
the community panel will be running along the same time um, and we'll be interviewing the candidates um, separately for uh, tomorrow and Wednesday. Um, and then you will debrief following that. And this will all be on Zoom, is that? So, so the, yes, the panel, um, the board meeting is remote. Um, so uh, we do have public comment if somebody is coming in person. Um, the boardroom will be open, but the board will be remote uh, tomorrow. So we will open the meeting. Um, there is an option for public comment, and then we will adjourn into executive session. So it is a closed session in our process. And we'll be getting those Zoom credentials tomorrow so at some point? So it was all in the packet um, that was okay. sent to the board. Yeah, I um, didn't see those. It's in the, in the um, paperwork. So, and she had previously sent it as well. Okay. For the... Um, for the staff, um, who will the staff members be that are participating in the interview process? So it is the department heads. So that is um, most of the, the individuals sitting here. Um, we also asked our deputy chief, Rungi, to participate um, uh, in lieu of the police chief. Okay. So we have only, we have a couple, what, three interim Directors? Uh, we have two. So um, we Interim have community development and our finance director. But they are participating because they are very knowledgeable and have um, a wealth of experience to contribute to the process. And then how are their questions derived? Is it a so free form? So all the questions for all of the panels are derived from GovHR. So we allowed the board, the community panel, and the department heads to provide feedback on the type of questions, but in order to ensure that um, everybody is evaluated the same, there is the same, so you have your, the board has a list of questions, we have a list of questions, and the community panel has a list of questions. They'll be asked the same across all candidates, but they are different. Um, so our questions are different than the questions you have, but they are, were all provided by the HR. And then will the only feedback from the staff interviews be through the um, the survey monkey that yes and that is in order to maintain confidentiality um, if we provide feedback and you end up picking a candidate that maybe somebody didn't like it would be um, awkward uh, if you knew that and so it is a confidential process what's the soonest that the board would be able to see the survey monkey results I have to confirm with WHR, but typically they can, um, you know, pull that information pretty quickly. So my understanding is you'll conclude, and WHR will have a debrief session, um, and then at that point they'll be able to communicate, you know, how they're going to get the community <coughs> panel information and the department head um, feedback to you. Just are, as well. Excuse me. Are the board members uh, questions? Supplied in the attack that we received today? Yes. So um, they, that is all. So you'll have the resume, then the questions, and then the evaluation forms. I did provide some written evaluation forms just to make it a little easier for you as you're going through. If you would like additional printed materials, I can certainly get those for you. Um, but everything is in the in the packet, and it goes one by one in the order of which you're interviewing. Are the questions out fine? To a specific board member so they did not assign you um you know who's asking a specific so the president is opening and closing the interview process um just to make it sort of a seamless transition um, but typically in an interview process you have the ability to kind of casually go from individual to individual so um you can ask follow-up questions but the list of questions is provided for you so i think it'll be a more um, casual, whoever is prepared to ask the question, the list of questions is provided there, but it's not attaching one particular question to a board member. Thank you. Um, when would the debrief be? Like after each evening? So, yes, at the end we of have each a evening? debrief after each session. Um, okay. So Katie Rush, who you met um, during our special meeting where you determined this interview process, will be leading the board. Um, Rick Jenix will be uh, leading the community panel, also with the Okay, any other questions? Okay, thank you. Okay, we will move to item 10, public comments on non-agenda <laughs> items. We have anyone lined up? 
Anyone for public comments on non-agenda items? Okay, village okay. clerk's report. I have no report tonight, okay. thank you. Village trustees, we will start on the right. Trustee Patrick. Thank you, uh, good evening everybody. Uh, just quickly, um, Villa Park Cable Commission has an exciting new show out there. It's called Now You Know with Leslie Allison CI. We've already um, aired two of our latest episodes. Um, the first one was with uh, local celebrity Matt Kassane at Crazy Poor Restaurant right on North Avenue in Villa Park. Uh, the second one was celebrating uh, Tony Odo and Michael Anthony's 20th anniversary this year of uh, being in business in Villa Park. Uh, that episode aired last Thursday. And then uh, on May 5th, we will have our third episode airing on AT&T UVerse Channel 99, Comcast Channel 6, uh, and that will air uh, at 6 p.m. If uh, you are interested and you want to know what's going on and who to know, uh, tune in, uh, check out the show. Leslie does an outstanding job, and um, hopefully uh, you get a chance to see it. Uh, outside of that, I just want to thank staff for everything that they're doing. I know that this is a uh, difficult time during this process for selecting a new manager, but thank you for all of your hard work. Uh, and, and thank you to our first responders out there, uh, you know, keeping us safe. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Trustee Kozak. I have no uh, report. Okay. Thank you. Trustee Salala. Uh, no report. Thank you. Okay. Trustee Corkery. So unfortunately, I was not able to attend the uh, Earth Day uh, Prairie Path cleanup this week, but I do have communication from Leslie Allison CI about it. So just for the record, I'll say that the Fund Commission, first of all, wants to thank Greg Gola and Brian Roche from Parks and Rec, Rich Salerno from Public Works for all that they did for the event. Uh, it was a big success. Thanks to Villa Park Impact also, they made a big difference. They had 50 volunteers come out. They got two and a half miles of the path cleaned. I uh, was out for a walk the other day. This is pretty good, so I can confirm that. The kids from St. A's came to volunteer, North School, Westmore, Montini, Willowbrook, and Jackson all came out, worked hard. Uh, they received backpacks with water and treats for all volunteers. Included $5 gift cards to Cream. And uh, thanks to Rough Life for the D skunk kits for the village dogs. And uh, now Villa Park can boost the cleanest path and pups in DuPage County. So thank you everyone for the support. And uh, I'd also like to say congratulations to the cast and crew of Honk Jr., which was done through the park, uh, Parks District. And, uh, or Parks Department, excuse me. And uh, I went to see it on Saturday. It was a very entertaining show, so congrats to everyone involved. And that's all I have for today. Thank you. Trustee Murphy. Yes, thank you. Uh, on behalf of Resident Joe Amore, he's asked me to do a shout out, um, congratulating and thanking everyone for attending the Metro Blitz that was on April the 13th. So be patient and I'll shout out a few thanks and some names here. Uh, all went great. Please thank Fire Chief Rakovnik, Bill Park Police Department, Ryan Ruby, CSO John Doyle, Dave Mattoon from Operation Lifesaver, Bob Wagner, employees of Metro and Union Pacific, Public Works for Property Upkeep, volunteers from DuPage Rail Safety Council, Imam Iman for graciously opening the coffee shop up for early coffee and of course manager Guerrero and president Cuzon for all of their support so it was a very successful event we were grateful that uh, we were blessed with decent weather and uh, everything went really great so thanks to everyone for attending and thanks to Matra for supporting our station and that's all I have thank, thank you. you okay village president support I don't have a lot tonight um, just uh, we will have coffee with the board on Saturday, May 7th, 9 o'clock up here uh, in our meeting room here. So everyone is welcome to attend. Um, and with our nice spring weather, hopefully everybody's getting out and uh, starting to enjoy the Prairie Path and uh, all our outdoor restaurants that we have here in Little Tavern. So hopefully everyone's getting spring fever. And with that, we go to the village manager's report. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, first, I'd like to welcome one of our new um, village employees, our, our new communication specialist, Donnie Pisano. Uh, Donnie joins us from the village of uh, Palos Park, where he was the assistant director of recreation, but also handled all their communications and marketing for the village, for the events and all the different departments, including managing their website. Uh, previously, he was also on the fan development team uh, as a member for the Chicago Blackhawks, and he has his bachelor's from uh, public relations and advertising from DePaul University. 
Uh, Donnie joined us last week, and so we're showing him around, but he will also be out there. Um, I know working with staff to kind of update a lot of our communications, and hopefully uh, you'll see some improvements in that area. Great. Great. Congratulations. Then, Welcome, Dana. Then additionally, I, I'm a little hesitant to say it because it seems like every time we put it out, the uh, Union Pacific changes their mind. Um, <laughs> however, uh, uh, they will be replacing the crossing on Villa Avenue starting uh, next week, May 9th. And then that, that portion will be closed until uh, May 20th. So there will be a detour. Those signs will be marked. But I know we put that two out weeks. a few times. Two weeks. In two weeks. Two weeks, yeah. Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. Two weeks. Um, and they've changed so hopefully they will stick to the schedule um, and then additionally i know there's been some comments along with the crossing of uh, the canadian national at addison and north avenue uh, public work staff has met with canadian national and i dot several months ago uh, they are in uh, canadian national is working on replacing that that crossing um, however they gotta go through a lot of different design aspects and working with the state so we're looking at probably later this summer uh, before that crossing will be replaced but that is uh, in the works um, as I know that is a kind of a brutal crossing right now yeah it's gotten worse though and then lastly I know we have the Arbor Day planting but I know there's been some comments um, on the board requesting so we've had um, we just purchased 20 trees that will be planted in the next two weeks um, and that would include the locations on Wildwood, so those locations will be taken care of uh, within the next two weeks uh, with the purchase of trees. Great. Okay. That's all I have. Here. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, our next meeting will be May 9th, uh, <coughs> two weeks from tonight. May 9th, uh, 7 o'clock. And with that, we have a motion to adjourn. Trustee Corkery, we have a second. Trustee Patrick. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we'll see you guys in two weeks. Have a great week. Our questions.